In the beginning was the eye and then there was the word. The picture tells a thousand words. And what we see by looking at Colony Australia 1770 to 1861 is a huge number of colonial pictorial narratives of the invasion and settling of Australia, the colonisation. We see very little evidence of its impact on Indigenous people. Our desire in curating colony frontier wars was to show what Indigenous people have experienced, the devastating consequences of the claiming of the East Coast by Captain Cook in 1770. In this installation of Julie Goff, the Chase installation, she looked at a work by Emmanuel Phillips Fox, The Landing of Captain Cook at Botany Bay, which was painted in 1902, commissioned by the NGV to celebrate Federation. In that work, which is the takeover of Aboriginal land according to the spurious doctrine of terra nullius with Aboriginal people on the outskirts of this canvas, this triumphal, conquering, imperialistic narrative. She composed a startling response to this work, which was Chase. 315 suspended tea tree from her homeland of Tabrugana with little strips of red cloth tied on these tea tree sticks. This is a sort of material presence of country, Aboriginal people fleeing. She took the gold frame off the Phillips Fox and also incorporated her dramatic and quite terrifying work Imperial Leather, which has waxen trophy heads hanging like soaps on ropes on a Territali Union Jack, referring to the whitening of Aboriginal Australia, the eugenics policies. She talks of this as a wrongly commenced national history. Australia began in the wrong way. When we were putting together the checklist for Colony 1770 to 1861, you Notice very quickly that there's very little Aboriginal material that fits neatly within a chronological narrative. You really need to use contemporary art to address some of the gaps in that story. The story of Aboriginal people's experience in Australia, the story of desecration of land and waterways, a story of missionisation, of genocide and, and tremendous loss. So there are artists today who are very aware that history is written by the victors, so the execution of Marboy Hina and Tana Minoe by Auntie Marlene Gilson, who's a Wathorong artist, depicts the first public hanging of two Tasmanian Aboriginal men that took place in Port Phillip, which is now Melbourne. That's in 1842, and it was such a large event that historical records of the time describe it as having a third of Melbourne's population turning out to witness this this hanging of these two boys. They describe it as being a festival atmosphere with people bringing picnics. So this is a story that really is not, you cannot really be told through any historical um, or legacy material. And so it's through contemporary works of art that address this absence of, of Aboriginal perspectives in history paintings that we're able to get a full picture of the story of Australia's early frontier period. One of the things we did in Frontier Wars was we took all of the objects that are held within the collection by artists whose names were not recorded and we massed them in a midden display and changed the labels from those objects from artist unknown to artist once known. You can see in the incised and painted surfaces of each object that there is an artist's hand present and that artist had a name and had a community and a language group and that's information that we don't have anymore. Generally with legacy collections and historical material, we know a bit about um, the person who collected it, but we almost never know anything about the maker and we very, very, very rarely know their name. So that's about us as a collecting institution and as curators, 
taking ownership over our role in the erasure of Aboriginal identities from the past and acknowledging that we've got a really small window of time that we're able to still learn some of this information. Some of our old people are still here and can still actually look at this material and identify some of these makers. And so as an institution, we have an obligation to put our collection out there and make it accessible. Without access, we will just miss this opportunity to learn the names of some of these people which we played a role in losing.